So followed by skilled labor. So K is 300 and M is 120. So 20 will be 0.4 cm. Uh, okay. So 20.4, that's 120. 300, 120. So that's your skilled labor. 10 M plus 4K does not exceed 1002. Okay, now followed by unskilled. So 33.33. .33. So one three three will be about six point six six cm. So it's around here, lah. Okay. And then M is one sixty. So sixty is one point two cm. So that's one sixty. So this is your unskilled 5M plus 6K does not exceed 800. Okay, then Donny is 21667. So 1667. Zero 0.3. So around here. Lah. 0 0.3. 0.3 so This is the line for Donny 3M plus 3K Does not exceed 650 Okay, so I've got all the lines drawn in Except the production rule So now the rule is if M is 0, K is 0. If M is 100, K will be 3. Okay? So if M is 100, K will be 3. So K does not exceed. 3M. Okay. Okay, so we need to now find where is the feasible region. Okay. Now the lines are all based on does not exceed. Okay, does not exceed, does not exceed, and so on. So it must all be underneath the line. So if they are all underneath the line, that means the region has to be below the blue line. So it's underneath here as well as below the red line so the region is this side okay but this side of the region right it's divided into half by this production group so you need to find whether is the top half or the bottom half now in the exam as i say it's easier you test it out if you're not very sure so that you don't make a mistake so how do you test it out now this line cuts into two so any value you take on the top and the bottom region, you fit into the equation and see whether it serves that purpose or not. Now let's say if I take one point here, for instance if I take a point here, okay, that this point is M equals to 30, K equals to 300. I just take any point, any value. So let's say this point is M is 30, K is 300. Now they say K must not exceed 3 times of M Okay, that's what they say So 300, 300 
must not exceed three times thirty. Is it true? Is it true? Is three hundred does not exceed ninety? No, right? It's wrong anyway. Three hundred is exceeding ninety. That means the region cannot be on top of it. The region is the one at the bottom. Now, if not, you just try. Now, let's say I take a value here. Let's say I take this value. Uh, that M is 200, K is 100. So, is it true that 100 does not exceed 3 times 200? Correct, right? Now, 100 does not exceed 600. That's correct. So, that's why we know the proper feasible region is the one below the line. Now, if it's the one below the line, then the feasible region must be here, here. Which is made up of point zero A, B, C. So which is your optimum solution? Now how do you find optimum solution? You, are, you will need your contribution now, okay? So I must come back to this part. Now what is your objective? Objective is to maximize contribution. And contribution is what? Now, contribution is not given, so you must calculate on your own. So, class, you can see from the figures given, right? Mimi, the selling price is 150. You can see it, huh? Uh, Mimi, selling price is 150. Now, we use calculator, huh? okay? We just press the number 150 minus what? 10. Minus 15 minus 50 minus 15 minus 30. These are all variable cost, man. So you minus all of them, you should get 30. Yeah? So we have 30M plus. Now we try for Kiki now. 100 minus 12 minus 20, 18, 30. So 20K. Now if your contribution is 30M. 20k then how do you draw the line so to draw the value in m goes to k 30 20 which can be 100 and 150 which can be 40 60 all right or if your scale is the same, uh, understand? Uh, if your scale is the same, you can even use your scale. For example, you can take 2 cm and 3 cm. If the scale is the same, uh, that means you take the same scale on both x and y, then it must be 2, third, two to 3. So if that's the case, then it's quite simple. So we go back to the graph. Okay. Now, anything that M is 2, K is 3. And because my scale is the same, it's 2 CM for every 100. They are both side consistent. So you see what I'm going to do is, M must be 2. So I take 1 CM. Okay. 2 ma, 1 CM. 3, 1 and a half cm. Now, count him. 1 cm, 1 and a half cm will give me 2, 3. No? So there's so many ways you can draw. Then in the exam, you just see which one you, you feel easier, then you just draw a line. Because this is not the answer. This line only helps you to find the answer. Name. So what you do now is take the ruler, you put it on the line, then you push it until the last point. Now when I push, I will hit A. When I go further, 
I'm going to hit C. So now it's very, very obvious the answer is B. Okay? So in this case, uh, we can see B is your optimum solution. Okay, now <clears throat> so your optimum solution is point B. In class at point B how many unit that you gotta make? Now equation that we need to solve simultaneously is ten M plus four K equals two thousand two. 5m plus 6k equals to 800. Now this is rather easy. We create equation 3 by taking equation 2 times 2. So it becomes 10m plus 12k equals to 1006. Now we take equation 3 minus equation 1. So 10 minus 10 is 0. 12 minus 4 is 8. 1006 minus 1002 is 400. So K equals to 50. That's your answer. Okay. Now if K equals to 50, then what is M? <coughs> so just replace any value that you like. So if K is 50, 4 times 50 is 200. 1002 minus 200 is 1000. 1000 divided 10 is 100. So the graph is quite obvious la, that this point come down is 100M and this point go here is 50K. So it's 50K, 100M. That's the unit that you have to make. So what is your profit? Now you know the contribution is 30 times 100 plus 20 times 50. So that will be giving us 4,000 and then you've been told that the fixed production overhead is 2,008 So net profit that we derive will be 1,002, okay? Now, so I <coughs> have run through quite a number of examples with you to do with linear programming, okay? So we have uh, another example in page 29. Now, that one I incorporated with decision making where you have to make use of your shadow price. So what you do is uh, you go back and try this as a homework, okay? Because these are things you, you gotta try yourself. Now. The more you try, the better you become. Okay? So page 29. Alright, go back, try as a homework. Okay? Now can we look at page 30? Now this linear programming, we also can use it for minimization objective so we can use LP for maximization objective that means we maximize contribution at the same time we can also use linear programming for minimization objective so you want to minimize variable cost. Now, to maximize value, you always take the last point 
because the furthest you go the highest value you can get so that's why to do maximization you go to the last point so if now you want to do minimization things become the ballet yes you have to take the first point okay you make it the other way around and you take the first point okay now so we have one example here in page 30 so we will use this to discuss how to do minimization says that ring wishes to minimize the expenditure on the contract for next month so they want to minimize the expenditure now how much of AREX and Bureo that they need to supply so they can meet the terms of the contract okay now story is like this uh, ring has a contract to supply a customer with at least 260 unit now minimum is 260 more never mind but at least 260 uh, that's why from here you, you understand a bit about how you want to get the lowest cost law, because we have minimum that we need to meet okay now so at least 260 in the total of two product called Ariax and Burio at least half of the total output must be AREX and both product use two types of labor skill and semi skill so they've given you the hour 4 and 6 4 and 2 now at, although additional labor can be made available at short notice that means you, you got no problem that's why you don't have a restriction you don't have a limit okay you have additional labor if you want the company wishes to make use of the 1002 800 which has already been assigned to work on the contract. That means this is the hour you contracted it. So you want to make use of the 1002 and the 800. Now the total variable cost for AREX is 120 and Bureau is 100. Now anyway, before we can start drawing the graph, you still need the same thing. You do need the constraint. Okay. So what you do? We still have to define variable. So let A be Arex, B be Burial. Right, then after that, you will have to define constraint. Now, there are four constraints that you have here. Okay, first is the total production. Okay, then the production mix. Then the skilled labor and the semi-skilled. Okay, you try.
don't think you have problem with skill and semi skill lah. So that one, I believe all of you can get it all right. That four A plus six B is at least a thousand two, and then four uh, A plus two B is at least eight hundred. Okay. Now. The total production of two product must be at least 260. So the two product is A and B. Okay, A and B. And then they say half of the total must be A. Alright, or more. Huh? Half of the total must be A. So what is total? Total is what? Now, total is not 260. Yeah. Total is A plus B. 260 is minimum money. So some of you will say, if you say half of the total must be A rest, some put A must be at least 130. Now, like that is not right. You only take 130 because it's 260 man. If it's 270, eh, then it must be at least 135. Right? So that's why you have to put them in an equation which is an unknown. So what must A be? A must be at least or more than 0.5 of A plus B. Eh? A plus B is total, man. half of total, so it's 0.5 of A, A plus B, okay? Okay, so if you want to draw, right? Now, if A is 0, B is, if B is 0, A is, So B is 200, A is 300, B is 400, A is 200. Now this is 260, 260, uh, 260, 260. What is this? If A equals to 0.5 A plus B, Now, one way of how you solve it is you can take away the 0.5 by times 2. So, if you times 2, then you times 2 here, then 2A equals to A plus B. So, the 0.5 disappear. So, if 2A equals to A plus B, then A equals to B. We have the A dump over. So, 2A minus A. So, A equals to B. So if A equals to B, then what you draw is very simple. Uh. If B is 100, A is 100. If B is 0, A is 0. Huh? If B is 0, A is 0. Okay. Okay, so my... Values all here, yeah. So I can now plot in in my graph. So my biggest value is B four hundred. A is three hundred. I'll use back two cm for every hundred. Hundred, 
Okay, so you've got something like this. <clears throat> right now the rest is all quite simple and straightforward. So the first one is 206E plus 60 is 60 of 2cm is 1.2. So 1.2 here. 1.2 here okay okay then B is 200, A is 300, 200, 300. So 4A plus 6B is at least 1002. This is the skilled labor. And then 400, 200. This is semi skill. 4A plus 2B. 800. Then just now we say A hundred, B hundred. A must be least half of A plus B. Now we are looking at an equation which is at least or more than. That's why now everything is the body here. So the region becomes the right hand side. So the region is here. Already. It's going to be here. Alright. And same thing now the region is broken into half. So is it the one on top or the one at the bottom? That's why we say if you're not sure, we just test it out. Lah. So how do you test it out? Now if I take one of the value here, let's say I take this value, that A is 300, B is 50. Now, A must be more than or equals to half of 350 is 300 more or equals to 175 yes so the answer is the region is at the bottom so the region is at the bottom sorry I think the line is very small so actually you can see it should be here 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 uh, so one point, two point, three point, four point. One, two, three, four. So these are your region. Uh, these are I don't need non-negative uh, because it's all above uh, above zero. So you have A, B, C, D.
Okay, so which one is your answer? Now, your objective now is to minimize cost. So once you find the region, right? Remember, objective now is to minimize variable cost. So the variable cost is what? Variable cost is 120 for A, 100 for B. So when you draw, you draw A as 100, B as 120. So you just reverse it, lah, the balik kan, huh? okay? So, so I'm going to draw A 100, B 120. So A 100 is here, B 120 is where? 20 is 0 0.4. Uh, this is 120 so that's your variable cost so class you must take the first point so the first point has to be if you take your ruler keep pushing it now if you push all the way I think you can see very clearly that First point is B, huh? Correct, no? You see, right? You enlarge it. Oh. So if you keep pushing, then you will hit B first. Huh? B is here, man. A is here. Man. C is here. Man. So you hit B first. Okay? So B is your optimum solution. Okay? Uh, the rest all the same, uh, so I don't need to do anything anymore. So it's all the same. You want to find what's the quantity you solve using simultaneous equation. You just take 4a plus 2b equals to 800. a plus b equals to 260. Solve it, okay? Okay. Okay, so as far as linear programming is concerned, I finish off everything with you. So I only left with one more example that you go back and try. Do it as a homework. Huh? Okay, we'll discuss that again in the next class. Okay, then you, you see how well you master the skills. Huh? Okay. So I move on with other things now. Now we want to see different decision making scenario now. Okay. In all these scenario, how do you solve the problem? Okay. Now, one of those scenario that we're gonna see is scenario to do with a closing down decision. Okay. Now, so usually you close down. It's because you want to discontinue maybe a loss making product or a division okay all right you want to discontinue a loss making product or a division now because you are having a very simple thinking that if i can close it down right i don't have to make the loss because if I maintain the division, if let's say every every year the loss is fifty thousand, I might as well close it down. Then I save the loss. Huh? Okay. Now these are example of situation that you must evaluate. That do you think close down is better, or continue is better? Okay. Now if you want to decide close down is better or continue is better, so your decision is close or continue. Which one is better? Now, how do you solve this problem? So what approach do you use? Okay, one approach that 
we can use is we can look at the differential cash flow okay one way la, is you look at the differential cash flow so the differential cash flow basically says that you look at okay if i close it down what will be the difference what cost i can save okay or what are the the benefit i will lose uh, then you start to look at the difference so if the different net to be you have more gain then you close down so you look at the differential cash flow now but some students they find it very hard to to use differential cash flow because they they cannot think like oh, if i close down what's the difference now if you cannot see that right there's another way you can do which can be longer but you can find easier to get answer is you can compare before and after okay you compare before and after now that that way will be longer all right but you find it easier for you to imagine it's like for example you look at okay before maybe i have four product uh, what is my profit after i only have three product left so what is my profit again uh, then I compare the different. Uh, that's how we, we can use another way of getting the answer. Okay. Now which way you like and which way you want to do, I say look look at the exam question and see which one you feel more comfortable. Alright? Because decision making is all up to you. Uh. We we don't limit you with the method. We only want the answer. How you do is up to you. Okay? Okay, I'm gonna show you an example first, page thirty one. Now see the, the requirement that they gave us over here. Huh? Now they ask us in part A, they say prepare a statement which shows clearly the results of continuing to produce product W, X, Y and Z at the same column as achieved in April. Now present your statement in a format suitable for decision making now see they only want you to prepare again a statement that if you continue all the four products in a format suitable for decision making okay in a format suitable for decision making So when you say a format suitable for decision making, what is that now? I think you read the question later, you probably will understand, okay? Now then B, they say, prepare a statement that you show clearly the financial result after Z is discontinued. Okay, what happened after Z is discontinued? Now, the number of unit of Y is increased in accordance with the manager's statement and assume that there's no change in selling price necessary to sell the unit. So now this is the result after you close down. So see which one is better. Now if you think the result in B is better than A, that means you should close down. But if result in B is not as good as A, then you might as well continue. So there's an example of how evaluation will be. Okay? Now then again in part C, they say give us some non- financial factor which one that you should consider before you discontinue the product so which one okay that you must consider before you stop product now let's go through huh? they say why plc makes and sell for product and they given you the profit and loss statement now class you see wxyz they gave us the sales the cost of sales the gp then the overhead which is selling and admin, uh, non-production overhead, then the net profit. Now you can you can probably see this P and L is based on absorption costing principle, which you know in decision making this profit figure is not accurate, it's distorted because you are affected by your production volume. So that's why we need to do a way, a method that we can see very, very accurately. Now the way is you must do marginal costing. You must show me contribution. Because now you champo everything together, I cannot see. But obviously now the management is concerned with 
product Z which is reported to be loss making so the company may have a simple idea lah, that if I make a loss of 3005 if I close down this product I don't want to make will my profit increase back with 3005 so will, will it be like that or not? that's what the manager is thinking yes or no now that's why you are called to evaluate okay okay the management team is concerned about the results particularly those of product Z and it has been suggested that YPLC would be better off if it ceased the production of Z now the manager has said that if Z were discontinued the resource which will become available could be used to increase production of product Y by 40% now this is the impact so if you, if you ask yourself okay if I stop this product what will happen? Now this is one thing that happened that if Z discontinued you can increase production of Y by 40% that's the difference okay okay you have been you have analyzed the cost structure for the product and now you discovered that for W, X, Y and Z your variable and fixed cost is made up of these two amounts now that's why you see 4, 8 plus 11, 2 is 16. This 16 is this 16 now. See that? So they are giving you the breakdown. And the breakdown is important so you can present your answer in marginal costing. Okay? Okay, the total fixed production cost, total fixed production cost include 20,000 that they are not specified to any product. So we call this as a common fixed cost okay this is a common fixed cost so a common fixed cost is those fixed costs that even you close down one product it makes no difference for example like maybe college banda got four courses okay so in the four courses we have some costs which are fixed some costs which are variable some fixed costs which are common common like rental Let's say, for example, I want to close one of our program. We want to close, for example, the, the diploma program. So if I close the diploma, then can I save the rental? I cannot work. I still need the college fund. So that's why the rental is something like this, which is common, that is not specified to any product. Okay? Now, so you will have no difference, even if you closed it. And they have been apportioned to each product on the basis of sales value. So they tell you, uh, they say this amount has been apportioned on the basis of sales value. So if you know the amount that is general is 20, and you know how they apportion, then you should be able to break up what is the specific one. Because the specific will be those fixed costs that if you close down the product, you also avoided the fixed cost. So you have to find how much is the specific, how much is the general. You gotta break it up. Okay, now go on. Okay, the selling overhead comprises. Oh, sorry. Uh, if the quantity of any product increased by more than twenty-five percent, the specific fixed production cost will increase by thirty. So if the volume increased more than twenty-five the cost will increase by 30. Okay, the selling overhead comprises a fixed cost of 5,000 per product plus a variable cost which varies in the proportion of the sales. The fixed cost is not specific but the sales director believe that they should be shared equally. Now again, uh, they tell you in the selling overhead one portion will be fixed one portion is variable the fixed portion is 5000 per product so if the amount is 8 that means you know 5k is fixed so variable must be 3 long. so you, you can interpret the question in this way lah, okay now the administration costs are central overhead again they are not affected by the product that you are making okay Right, so all these are the details we know. Now, what they want us to do now, right? A. They want the MCPNL. 
so that it will become suitable for decision making. Right, so we have W, X, Y, Z, and total. What is not affected is the sales. So 30, 20, 35, 15. Now we first minus the variable cost. So what variable cost you have? You have your variable production cost what else is variable selling now after minusing the variable cost you will then get the contribution of each product okay then you minus your specific fixed cost first now the specific fixed cost got what fixed production overhead that's it just fixed production overhead selling and admin they are all non-specific okay that will give you the profit for each product now the profit for the product will then be added up together so that you get what is the total then from the total you minus off the common fixed cost because the common cost doesn't affect by the product so we will minus it out together as a total okay now I've given you the, the idea you just have to fill in the blanks only, okay? Now, how you get the figures is how I've explained to you just now. You should not take more than three minutes, now, okay? Just put the numbers in.
Right, so your variable production cost is 4816, 2 and 5000. The one is given, okay? Now the variable selling will be the selling overhead minus out the 5000, okay? Right, no? So the 8000 minus 5 is 3, no? then 2, no? 3005. 1,005. Huh? You just minus out 5,000 from each figure. So you have 3,000, 2,000, 3,005, 1,005. Okay, so with that, my contribution would be 222. Two, two. Eighteen three hundred eight thousand five. Okay, the specific overhead, right? Now, see the question said that there's this twenty thousand common overhead that they have a portion using sales value. So if you know what to do, actually you find it's not very difficult to take it up. But I just show here lah, in case you cannot follow the figure. Okay. The fixed production overhead is 11 to 6,004, 8,008, and 5,000. Now the general overhead is 20k. But the 20k, right, you apportion into 30 out of 100. Because they say follow the sales. 30,000 is the sales. 100,000 is the total sales. That means 6,000 you apportion here. Now likewise for the next product, is 20 over 100. Lo. So 4,000 is apportioned here. Okay. Okay, then we have seven thousand and finally three thousand. So this is the figure leave behind that become the specific fixed production overhead. Five thousand two, two thousand four, one thousand eight and two thousand. Okay, so five thousand two 2004, 1008, and 2000. So profit is 17, 14, 16.5. And six thousand five. So actually, this product Zach, uh, if you really look at it, uh, the product is making profit. So if you say that close down this product, you ask me what will happen. Uh, now I can tell you. If you close down this product, you will lose six thousand five of profit because that is the profit specific to the product. The rest of the fixed cost all general one. You close down, you don't close down, you cannot change the fixed cost. That's why by closing down, 6,005 will disappear. But of course, the difference is besides closing down, they also tell you that the production can move to other product. That one is what you must evaluate. Okay? Now, so in total, my specific profit is 54. Okay, my general fixed cost for production overhead, they mentioned got 20. Then for the selling overhead, also 20. Then finally, the admin overhead is 8. Now you get back to 6,000. 
the net profit is total. Okay. Now, so I've done A. So A is just to redraft the profit statement. So can we now go to part B? Okay. Okay, now B, they want you to evaluate. So you show the number like, that what will happen, okay, what will happen if let's say you, you discontinue product Z. Now just now I told you, there's two ways of how you can answer the question. One, you show the differential cash flow. Two, you compare before and after. Okay, before is like this. Before. What is after? Now, after you just do again the same thing, then you put back W, X, Y, and here. Z no more, dear. So when you put back W, X, Y, and without Z, right? Then you ask yourself if there is any figure that you need to update. Uh, if you think of figures you need to change, then you change. Uh. After you change, uh, you calculate until the end, you see what's the profit. Now that profit is the new profit after you close up. If the new profit is higher than 6, you close up. But you see, you do like that, the answer becomes very long. Because you have to do all over again. And you know there are a lot of things you don't have to do all over again. Why? Because you see, W will not be different. X will not be different. Then why should I waste my time and do again and again? But I say if you cannot see one, right? Then this way is the, the easier way for you to understand. Uh. But a student who can see, then you should do a differential cash flow. Now, if you want to do a differential cash flow, first of all, uh, let me ask you. If you close Z, what would be the differences? Now, Z, no more. Okay, if Z, no more, is there anything that you need to remove or take out? Because right now, the 6,000 is together with Z inside. So if you say Z, no more, what do you do? Okay. Now, what else that will be different? Yes. Why they say will increase production. So the current profit is 6,000. So please adjust for me. If Z, you say no more, what do you do with the number? Do you add, do you minus? And if Y increase, do you add, do you minus? Okay, what do you add, what do you minus? You put in the figure. Now after you put in the, deep, the figure, what is the new total? That's it. Now this is called differential cash flow. You just look at the difference. What's the difference after you stop? You try that.
So first of all, if you take away Z, am I right to say everything in this column will disappear? Everything, right? Sales no more, the cost also no more, the fixed cost also no more, then the profit will disappear. So if you ask me what's the difference, now the first difference I will say is profit attributable to product Z 6005 gone. No more. Okay. Okay. Then they say what? They say volume in Y increase how many percent? Forty. So when volume increase forty, what will happen? Now is it true that volume go up forty, contribution also go up forty? Correct. That volume increase, contribution also increase. Not sure, uh, y'all. Hello, hey. Because contribution is per unit one. Right? So if your contribution is twenty dollar, your volume now is one hundred. So the total is two thousand. Uh. So if your volume increase by twenty percent. Then this must also increase by 20% when I get together. So that's why when you know that the volume increase, the contribution increase. So increase in the contribution of Y. So the increase is 0 0.4 of. Now the contribution is 18,003. So you increase it by. 18.3 which comes to 7 what? 7 3.20 but then the question also say that in the event if your volume increase more than 25% your specific fixed cost will also increase more so there will be increase in the specific fixed cost of Y. Now, specific fixed cost for Y, just now we know it's 1008. So the 1008 will increase by 30%. So it will be 540. Now, what else will be different? No more. Did. That's why you see, you want to do all over again. Ah. Wow, there's, there's a lot of things you do all unnecessary. But if you just do the different, it's easy. You just see what's the different. You just put down the different. Now this will be the profit without product Z. So the profit will actually go up, but not much, by 280. Now, the question did not ask, la, but we can see that if you are saying purely on financial ground, uh, this continuing Z would lead to increase in profit. But it's not much, it's only 280. But it's still an increase, right? Therefore, it is feasible to stop Z.
Okay. Now this is how you deal with discontinuation decision. See class, they ask in part C, right? They say what would be the non-financial factor? Because they put to you that financially, financially, you should stop this product. But what about the non-financial factor? Now, what would be those reasons that you should go on with this product that you don't look at money, you look at other things, like what? Example. Now, maybe you can think of a lot of reasons as long as it makes sense. Uh. Maybe you can think of the present customer because they have been loyal that they buy this product from you. So now you suddenly stop the product. How would they feel? Can you say not? Okay. Now, so these things that we want to see. Now, what will be the... The impact or the reaction for the present or the existing customer for products like example now will they feel any form of disappointment which eventually would there be an impact on your image all right so will this affect your reputation now then they did mention that the extra capacity you can convert it to wine but to convert it to wine you might need your worker to deal with a new product so do you need to do any form of retraining so that the worker from Z can adapt to the environment in product Y? Okay, or if you find that it's so difficult for them then you're gonna have problems, you have hiccups, you have interruptions, so you might want to think of things like retraining, okay? Now, you might have to take into account the life cycle of the product when you want to decide whether or not you want to stop. Why? Because is this product an existing product that is quite mature, that you already see no potential? Or is this still a very new product that there is still potential? Because if the product still got potential, then you cannot judge on present value. Or now the, the value you see is a bit low. Maybe in the future it will grow. Eh? So that's why you must look at the life cycle. So that example, whether the product is still new to the market, so you still have growth potential. Okay, now this, this could be things that you have to take into account, uh, some, some of these things, all right? Now, sometimes you might want to look into issue like whether you still have any obligation to whatever past sales you've made. Example, like, do you still give warranty? So if you have products that come with warranty, if you're going to stop this product, then the future, if anything go wrong, people come back, do you have product for replacement or not? Are they going to no product for replacement, then how? So all these are things that you might want to think, take, take into account like, before you're going to stop. Like, it's just a very simple business decision. Like, that before you stop something, you just ask yourself, what issues that could affect us? Okay? Now any answer is okay, right? as long as it makes sense. Follow? Okay, we go to page 32. Now we'll see the next scenario now. See, what we've just seen now is about closing down decision. 
Okay. So what we're gonna see is about timing of closure. See, the idea is like this. First, you got to make evaluation Okay, first you make evaluation Now, if your answer is no Then you might continue the business Now let's say your evaluation turns out to be yes I would like to close down the business Okay, then you must evaluate when do you close down. Okay, when do I close down? Let's say I got a supermarket in Vietnam, shopping center. Now I find my shopping center Vietnam loss making again. I have decided I want to close it down. Now yes, I have decided I want to close it down, but it doesn't mean I must close it down immediately. Because if I close it down immediately, the effect could be worse. Because sometimes we still have agreement and contract that even we close down something, I still have to pay for the cost. For example, rental, I cannot cancel immediately. Then the staff agreement, I cannot cancel immediately. So there's a lot of things we cannot cancel immediately. So if you insist to close down, you still have to pay. Then I might as well carry on this. Because at least I carry on, I get back some revenue, I cover back some costs, then I can give notice and tell them I'm going to close down in six months time. So by the time six months later, I can close down, I don't have to continue paying all these costs. Already. So that's why timing become an issue because you have committed costs that are not immediately avoidable. You have committed costs that they are not immediately avoidable. Alright? Okay. So how they can test you this up question? Now, the question can be in one of the two style. The two style. Here, okay? Okay, the first style is the question will specify the time frame for the closure. Like close now or 12 months later okay close now or close 12 months later or close six months later now they don't have more options just two only now or 12 months so you don't have six months you don't have nine months just now or 12 months two options now better or one year later better which one okay now so when you want to evaluate usually we will then do an evaluation if close now, what's my financial effect? If close 12 months later, what is my financial effect? Which one I think that my loss is lower? Then I'll go for the answer, okay? Now, so here example, a short one, okay. Citox has decided to close Division X, which is loss making. If close in six month time, Citox will sell another 2,500 unit of A at the contribution of $6. Now the rental will be 5,000 per month. And to close immediately, Citox has to terminate the rental agreement in lieu of notice at an amount of 20,000. Let me compensate lah, 20K. Now workers have to be made redundant if you close now, which is at 12,000. But if it's six months time, you have sufficient time to serve a termination notice so that you can avoid compensation. Now, do you want to close now or do you want to close later? 
So the only way is you must get some numbers out and compare. Okay. Now, first of all, they say if you close, if you continue another six months, you're gonna sell another two thousand five, right? So two thousand five will translate into what contribution? Okay. So class, this contribution. Will you get if you close now? No. So new. But if you close six months later, you're gonna get extra two thousand five times six. So you have fifteen thousand. Now there's already a difference. Close now, close later. Okay. Okay. Go on. Now if you close immediately. You still need to pay a rental, but you pay twenty k. Okay, you pay twenty k. Compensation is twenty. If you close six months later, then you continue to pay the rental. Now the rental is how much a month? Five thousand. But you have enough time to cancel the contract, ma. So you just pay five six months of rental, five times six. Thirty. I'm gonna give you the salary. Can I add one line here? Workers' salary will be, let's say, four thousand per month. Realize that I miss out the salary. Okay, now go on. Ah, huh? okay. Then they say that if you're gonna close now, you don't have to pay salary. Okay, but no salary. You have to result in redundancy payment. Which comes to twelve thousand. If you close six months later, of course you must employ the the worker, and when you employ the worker, you pay extra twenty four lah. But you don't have to pay redundancy. Now, so based on these two evaluation, we realize that if you close immediately. You still need to pay thirty two thousand. That's your loss. But if you close six months later, you will have to pay thirty nine. So like that, might as well close now. Why wait another six months? I lost more. Okay. Now based on this, my decision is. I rather close it now, rather than to wait another six months. Okay. The second example that they can test you is they will not give you a time frame. That time frame is not. Specify. Now, if they don't give you the time frame, then what you must do is you need to identify what is the longest commitment. Now, example, I say that you must give six months notice. Now, if question never say when to close, not like the first case. I'm I'm very clear now or six months. So they only give you in the question that you need to a certain notice. 
Now, if you need to give certain notice, you must look for the one that the notice is the longest. Then what you do is, you evaluate by taking t plus 1. Take the longest one, add one more. So if the longest is 6 months, you add 1 becomes 7. So what do you mean by add 1? That means you ask yourself, if you close in the first month, second month, third month, until the seventh month. Okay? You close in the first month, second month, all the way until the seventh month. Now, with all these months, which will be the month that you will start to enjoy saving? Now, the month that you will start to enjoy saving is the month you should close it. Okay? Which can be earlier. You may not need to wait until the sixth month. Alright? Now, but if you have to wait until all the six months to pass, right? That means you only enjoy saving in the seventh month. Then you have no choice. You have to wait for all the contract to lapse. Then you close. Okay? Now, you see, this question is something like that. I'll show you, see what, what you see in the question. Okay? Now, they want us to do two things. If you see requirement in page 33. Now, first, calculate what is the long term saving or extra that will result from the closure of the printing department. Okay? Long term saving or extra from the closure of the printing department. Now, they say a company is considering the closure of their printing department. So they are still considering. They have not decided. Okay? They are considering closure of their printing department. Now the department prints all the company's publicity, material and also carry out some other printing job as required. An external firm has offered to produce all their printing requirement at a cost of 9000 a month. Now, someone from outside come to you and offer you, you pay me 9000 one month, I'll do everything for you. So now you think, if all my costs add up is more than 9000 I might as well let you do cheaper one, you know? But if all my costs add up is less than 9000 I might as well do myself. So the side end of the day, now you must see. Lo. Let you do cheaper or I do cheaper. So this is like closing down also. Okay? Now, so now they tell you the internal printing cost. Right? They say, Every month you need 80,000 sheets of customized paper and they cost $50 per thousand. The contract for supply of the paper require three month notice. That means even you close now, you still got to buy the paper, no? because you must wait three months. The earliest is three months. Company does not hold stock, so if there's any excess stock, they can sell it at twenty per thousand. Now. A total of 400 litres of fluorescent ink are used every month at a cost of 1.8 per litre and they will need one month notice of cancellation. Again, no stocks of inks are held but any excess can be sold for 0 0.5 per litre. So 400 litre, one month, you can sell it at 0.5 per litre. Now, other paper or material will cost 2850 per month. Okay, the printing machinery is rented at 4005 per month. It is operated for 120 hours each month. So, the rental contract can be cancelled with two months' notice. The two employees in the department are each paid $1,000 per month. Now the company has a no redundancy policy, which means employees are guaranteed employment, even if the department closes. Now the overhead for printing department will be variable at $4, fixed at $3.
The variable vary vary in the direct proportion to machine hour. The fixed overhead represent an apportionment of the central overhead which would not alter as a result of the printing closure. So now, should I close or should I not close? Now, one way to know whether I close or not is I must calculate my cost. So let's evaluate my relevant cost of internal printing okay my relevant cost of internal printing so how much would that be right first of all now if I do my own printing I will need customized paper. So eighty thousand. The cost is fifty per thousand. So we will have to pay four thousand dollars just to buy customized paper. Okay, then you have to buy the ink. Now the ink will cost you 1.8 per liter. Then the other paper and material would cost two eight five zero. Right, then they say the printing machinery. So rental of machine will cost four thousand five. And then they say there are two employees in the department. So the employees pay. But if you read carefully, they mention that this employee is on a no redundancy policy that they need to be employed even if you close down. That means I close down or I don't close down, I still have to pay them. So something that if I need to pay, I cannot avoid, then it's not relevant anymore. So that's why the employee's pay is new. Because I go on, I don't go on, I still have to pay them. So there's no difference. Okay? So this is new. Now I need to pay variable overhead, which costs me 4 per machine hour. And I need to operate 120 hours a month. So 480. Now, but then the fixed overhead, they say, is not relevant. It's just an apportion overhead. So again, this is irrelevant. Now, so just purely on this figure alone, I can see that if I go on with my own printing, right, it will cost me 12,550, which is quite obvious, right? that our guy only charge you 9,000 more okay so since the external printing cost 9,000 which is lower 
than the relevant cost of internal printing. So we shall close down. the department Now the longest commitment is how many months? Uh? Three months. So three months is the longest commitment. So when you do the evaluation, you just need to evaluate up to four months. Why four? Three plus one. That's why I say if the contract is five months, you evaluate at least six. So you follow the contract and then you add one. So in the fourth month, uh, in the fourth month, is the month that you free up all the commitment. When you free up all the commitment, you only have pure 9,000 only. That is the fourth month. So now my question is, in the first month, second month, third month, any of these three, will there be a possibility that I can close this so that I already start enjoying the saving? May not be a lot, but it's still a saving, okay? Now that is what they want you to do in part B. That you must work out the timing of closure. Okay? So you can come back later after the dinner. You can try this, okay? So we just need four columns close in the first month, second month, third month, fourth month, and then work up. So which month you will make your choice, all right? Okay, we take the